Greetings. This is uh, Stephen Williams, Bishop in the Large Church. Thank you so much for joining us as we travel a little bit tonight in our Bible study for Behind the Veil. And we talk a little bit about what's going on uh, in our society and at large. And so although there is no Bible study physically tonight at GBC, I wanted to make sure that I gave you a word um, that we've been, that that the Lord has really ministered to me and spoken to me on um, while we're here. All right. And so let's pray. Father, in Jesus name, we appreciate you tonight. Thank you for the opportunity for us to share the word of God. Lord, give me clarity of thought and of speech as we move in you and encourage the people of God. In Jesus name. Amen. And so tonight, Wednesday, March 18th, what an interesting scenario that we have been placed in in our society. Uh, this whole notion of the coronavirus and um, this pandemic and this is moving um, across the world, if you will, in everything that's happening. And uh, it has us dealing with unprecedented situation because most people have never been off their jobs and children out of schools and MBA being canceled. And so there's a lot of uh, things that are happening, but I wanted to share with you in the word of God as much as I possibly can and to encourage you. Uh, and we're going to go through a few scripture and we're going to do a few things just to encourage you. But I want to talk and I'll do this again on Sunday, if the Lord permits and all things are well. I want to talk about the role of the believer in the middle of a crisis. The role of the believer in the middle of a crisis. And I think it is imperative that we note who is who in this scenario. Uh, there are a lot of people, uh, fear has gripped the world, especially the United States of America. And so there is a lot of things that is that's happening. But the role of the believer is supposed to be a different role and we should move differently as we always have. Uh, I was able to say this, that, um, that there is so much going on. And, and, and I'll, I'll start by this, that the final word of action in the word of God as a believer has the final word has never been calamity. God has always throughout the history of time been able to give us a resurrection or to provide joy in the middle of all of that, in the middle of chaos. We've never had had it so that the end result is going to be calamity. The end result has always been for the believer, uh, resurrection, joy, even after pain. We know it this way. Weeping may endure for a night, uh, but joy comes in the morning. And so we know scriptures like that. But when we function outside of the realm of uh, the position of the believer, and we start functioning in our own mentality and in our flesh, we lose some things and some power. All right. And so on Sunday, I was able to teach from uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 12. And 1 Samuel chapter number 12, verse 20 says, And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all this wickedness, yet turn not aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And turn ye not aside, for then shall ye go after vain things which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. Listen to this. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it had pleased the Lord to make you his people. I want to encourage you uh, that although I personally believe that a part of this calamity is happened because for years we the world has uh, tried to remove God and uh, there are pockets of people in different countries who still tried to push God into the agenda. Uh, but now it seems like we all talking to God. 
uh, trouble has a way, calamity has a way. And although this is something new, uh, this is something different. Uh, and, and by way of the virus, it is not for us to be fearful. Uh, that's not the role of the believer is to be fearful. Uh, and so uh, one of the things that I, that someone shared today is that the voice of the church is needed more now than it has ever been needed uh, before because there is so much chaos. But if you lose your ground as a believer, if you lose that place as a believer, then the world itself will fall into a tailspin. And so the role of a believer in the crisis, uh, you won't believe. The first thing is, is that our responsibility in this time our responsibility in this time is to allow them to do what they're doing, is to allow the politicians to do what politicians do. It is to allow doctors to do what doctors do. It is allow uh, scientists to do what scientists do. It is uh, for anybody who's on the CDC and on the Department of Health and Human Services and for the police to do their job and for the medical people to do their job. But the first role of the believer is not the function in fear. We must roll, we must get into the measuring stick and the most powerful weapon we have ever had in any crisis, in any crisis, has been the power of prayer. We've never, we've never gone through anything in this life without displaying the power of prayer. The believer has always functioned in prayer. And so, when we look at that, we know a very famous scripture that we talk about. And I just want to make sure that I read these things in our hearing. And they are being echoed. They're being echoed um, throughout, throughout everywhere. They're being echoed throughout the world. But look at this uh, in Second Chronicles chapter number seven. If my people who are which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal their land. Now listen, verse 15 says, Now mine eyes shall be open, and my ears attend, attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. So in, in Old Testament time, prayer was necessary. So the first thing you want to do is function in the measure of prayer, because praying is what turns this around for the believer. For the believer, we don't, we can't walk in fear. We must walk in 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 prayer. And and I wrote, jotted on my notes: wherever fear is present, you will not function in faith. Wherever fear is present, you can't function in faith. And prayer is a byproduct of being able to get God's attention. Let me give you another scripture out of James chapter number five. And I'm doing this on purpose to make sure I don't just quote things out and that I read them so that you can go back to them and double check because this is not an opportunity and a time for us. Uh, we got to get back and we're going to talk about that too, getting, getting into the word of God. Listen to this in James chapter number five and verse number 16. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, the role of the believer, the righteous man availeth much. And so when you're beginning to get into the righteousness, um, the righteous man's first point of contact should be that we pray. That is our most powerful weapon. I understand praise um, definitely is a weapon that we should use, but it is through the mechanism of prayer that we even can get to praise because prayer is that communicative and that communication piece. And so as a point of encouraging you, pray is easy. It's not something you have to do. You can do it in your chair. You can do it at home. You can do it in your seat. You can do it. Pray for the nation. Pray for the people of God. Look, plead the blood of Jesus and pray that God will reveal a cure. Pray that this be lifted up because the trick is, is that this whole thing is causing even further distance 
And we were talking about this on Sunday when we gathered. He said, where, where there are, the scripture declares, where there are two or three gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing. And uh, on Sunday, there was no touching. Uh, and so we got to make sure that we get back to the point where we're able to commune, uh, not uh, forsaking to assemble ourselves because this is where we get our strength. We overcome by the word, uh, by, by, the, by our testimony, the word of the Lamb. And so it is crucial that we pray for togetherness and being able to agree and assemble and be where we are. And so prayer is something we can do. It is the role of the believer that we pray for understanding. We pray that God will reveal it. In fact, there's an Old Testament scripture that said he, re he doesn't do anything unless he reveals it to the prophet. Well, reveal it, Lord, to the prophet. We're praying so that we'll know not to walk in fear and fear not. And so that we can encourage other people who may not be believers, who may not be as strong as you are or I am or we are in our belief in God. And so we want to make sure that we get into the measure of the first uh, first stage of our weapon, the role of the believer is to pray, not to worry, not to talk, not to fret, but to pray. Uh, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, or they shall soon be cast down. Yeah, fret will cause you to do some crazy things. Listen to me. Listen to this in Second Corinthians uh, chapter number 10. Uh, verse number three, listen to this. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exhausted, exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And so God has given us the power. Well, our weapons are, are, are not carnal, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. And although we are in this carnal body, and although we are in this world, uh, it is a duty in the role of the believer to make sure you function in your power to cast down imaginations. Anything that's going to go against the, the thoughts or the knowledge of uh, of God. And here is the thing as a believer. What do you know about God? What can you say about him? And I've been with him a long time. And although this is brand new to me, it is calamity and famine and disease and plagues. They are not new to God. And so to come against the knowledge of God, one of the things we must do is trust in the name of the Lord. And trust in the knowledge of God. What is it that he said out of the book? What is it that he said out of the word of God? And so you must do that. And you must profess that. Which is the second thing I want to talk about. Because uh, with this scripture, you have to bring those, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Because if you're not careful, you'll start thinking doom and gloom. You'll start thinking that it's not going to work. You think yourself sick. You think yourself that it's not going to happen. But when you go with the knowledge of God and you make a declaration that you are healed, that God is your protector, that God is your way maker, that God will lead you and guide you into all truth. And it is that measuring stick, even with people who have it, God is still a healer. God is still a way maker. And so I want to encourage you to make sure your thought patterns are flowing in the right way. Uh, everyone, everyone at this point in time is pulling up Psalm 91. And when you get to Psalm 91, it is a powerful, powerful scripture. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. And so get up under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall, he shall cover thee with his feathers and on his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, 
nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Uh, only with thine eyes shall thy behold and see the reward of the wicked, be, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, uh, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thy dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, which is a snake. Uh, the young lion and the dragon shall be trampled under feet because he hath set his love upon thee. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's Psalm 91 and people are quoting it, but it's more than just quoting it as a role of the believer. It has to be packed in with faith. And so that word has got to come out of your mind and it's got, got to come from your thought process. It must. The word only works when faith is applied to it. You can't just end the, the calamity, pull up the word out of fear and then expect it to, to just operate. No, the role of the believer is to pray. Number one. The second one is to get into the word of God through faith and proclaim it. You've got to study it. You've got to proclaim it. And you've got to pull it out by faith, not by fear, not by manipulation. Uh, listen to uh, one of the things I said. Don't lose your position of dominance or of dominion. Because if you lose your position of dominion, you will be dominated. Hallelujah. If you lose your position of dominion, dominion thinking, you will be dominated by fear and what the enemy is throwing. And even this thing of coronavirus and even the flu and anything else. And so don't lose your place of dominion. We know we learned in Genesis, God has given you dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and over every living thing, over every creeping thing. And so he made you after his image and in his likeness. Don't lose your dominion. Because you will get dominated if you do. Uh, the kingdom of God, Bishop Hash uh, said this. Uh, spiritual father, Bishop Hash uh, said this. He said that the kingdom of heaven is, is verbal. And what the Lord shared with me, it is not visible. Uh, it's not visual. It is not birthed out of what you see. It's birthed out of what you say. You will have what you say. And you've got to believe that text. Even in this calamity, you've got to get some really good uh, word. It, it, let, let the word get down inside of you so that you don't lose your place, your position of dominion. Uh, this is not a season for us to be dominated. This is a season for us to walk in dominion. And as a role of the believer, you must... Uh, Bring in the peace of God. Let the peace of God rule your heart and be established. Hallelujah. Let the peace of God rule your heart. Let the word of God rule your heart, not fear, not anger. And I know a lot of people are being upset about this, that, and the other, but this is not a time to question uh, how people are doing what I uh, see things people are Talk pastors are against pastors. One of my friends said, can, can us bishops and pastors really and uh, get on one accord so that when crisis happens, we all say the same thing? Yeah, and I laughed about it, but it's a true point. Uh, look, we don't function in fear. Uh, we we supposed to walk in the word of God and make sure that the word of God is our mainstay, our stability. And so we must quote it. Don't lose your place of dominion while you're in distress because you're going to get dominated. 
We walk by faith, not by sight. We do not walk in fear. And if you walk in fear, you will remove faith. And anything that is not faith, you won't speak. And if you can't speak it, you can't pray for it. And if you can't pray for it, he can't hear from heaven. If he can't hear from heaven, he cannot heal the land. Hallelujah. And the weapons, you can't even pull them down. And so this is the season where we're going to pull down the weapons, uh, the cast down the imaginations. Uh, there is victory on the other end of this. Uh, and that this is for, for most of us in the uh, Christian world. Uh, it, it may not be Corona, but honey, we've all been in a crisis. And you've got to understand if you've been in any level of crisis, what is the knowledge of God? If we prayed to him, has he not brought you through? Has he not brought you out? Has he not made a way? Has he not opened up a door? And if he did it before, as Ty Tribbett says, he can do it again. Same God right now. Same God back then. Scripturally, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Try not to be preachy. All right. Uh, uh, point number three. Point number three. Uh, but I get excited about the word of God. Point number three. You must... In crisis, the role of the believer is you must guard your mind and you must guard your heart. Come on with me. Let's go to Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12, one of my favorite scriptures. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect uh, will of God. In order for you to know this and walk in it the way you should, you've got to renew your mind. Do not get caught in the trappings. Hallelujah. Do not get caught in the trappings of the tragedy. Amen. Do not lose your position of dominion. Uh, because you will be dominated. You will be destroyed. But our God is still on the throne. Uh, we may not know about coronavirus. The scientists may not have an answer. But God certainly is. He's Alpha and he's Omega. There is nothing that has happened that he hadn't already known about. And the role of the believer is to make sure you function in that. Go with me to Proverbs uh, 23 and 7. Very quickly. I'm almost finished. Proverbs 23 and 7. Uh, I know they wish we could have Bible study this quickly. Huh? <laughs> For as he, as, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. Uh, but his heart is not with thee. And so what, what is this particular scripture? Uh, as a man thinketh, as a man thinketh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you don't change the context and the confines of your mind, if you don't change those mi your mind concept, hallelujah, if you don't change how you're thinking, you'll start flowing in, in fear. If you flow in fear, I think I got a theme here. If you flow in fear, you can't flow in faith. And if you can't flow in faith, you cannot be verbal and proclaim those things that are in the kingdom. And if you can't do that, you've lost your dominion. And if you lose your dominion, you'll, you'll be uh, destroyed. You'll be in dismay. You can't proclaim it. Psalm 91 will not even apply to you. Uh, Psalm 23 won't even apply to you. That the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want. And though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, uh, you will fear no evil for God is with you. You can't do it. You can't pray. You can't lose what's happening. You cannot turn it around. So your mind must be in tune with the knowledge of God. Go back to your books. Go back to what, who you are and find out what did God say? Hallelujah. Even in the middle of distress, what did God say? Even in the middle of trouble and tragedy, what did God say? Let's walk in the knowledge. Now, this is not for us to be silly. This is not for us to be wayward. I am exercising just as much precaution as anybody else. I'm washing my hands even more. I'm conscious of where I'm going. I'm conscious of things that are around me. I'm monitoring that. But even though I'm walking in caution to not purposely get um, uh, the virus, I am still going to believe God 
uh, in my thinking and in how I'm flowing. And I want to encourage you. The role of the believer is to do the same. One final scripture, and I'm going to get out of your hair so that you will have the opportunity uh, to uh, listen to this. Get this down in your heart. Get this down in your spirit. Now, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter number 16. Matthew, chapter number 16. This is my final scripture tonight. Uh, and this is after Jesus, when, and this is really the foundation of my scriptures, uh, after Jesus sits up and he talks uh, to Peter, and Peter comes into the rev revelation, and he asks everybody, who do men say that I am? And everybody says, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're uh, uh, another prophet, uh, some say you are Elias. Peter jumps in and, and jumps into the fray, and he, it could only be revealed to Peter because Jesus had not told anybody who he really was. And so God then revealed who Jesus was. And Jesus, uh, Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered, flesh and blood, Simon Barjona, has not revealed this unto you. And he said, because of the revelation that God has given to you about who I am, the Christ, that I have not shared with anybody, he said, there are keys. There is keys. And upon that rock, I'll build my church and I'll give you keys. This is verse number 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And so in my final conclusion of the role of the believer, hallelujah, is to function in the revelation of who is the Christ. Because in that revelation, you have kingdom keys to loose and to bind. And so going back to my first thing, the, the, the role of the believer, everybody, I need the police to do their role. I need the medical people to do their role. I need the politicians to do their role. Yes, send me a thousand dollar stipend. In fact, send me two or three. I'll take them all. Hallelujah. I need you to do what is necessary. Give me the things uh, that is necessary. My the, my place of employment, yes. If we want to work from home, yes, I, I'll take it. I'm going to do all of those things. I'm going to use hand sanitizer. I'm going to wash. But the real role of the believer, the real role of the believer is the first thing we need to pray and start binding and loosing, finding out from God, because when it's over, God can heal the land. God can find a, 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 a vaccine as quick as man found the virus. Hallelujah. As quick as man found the virus, God can find a vaccine. Uh, he can allow somebody, but it requires the prayers of the, of the believer. Plead the blood of Jesus everywhere because wherever the blood is, the death angel couldn't come. But you can't do that if you don't have a, a, a change of mind, a change of thought out of Romans 12. And as you think in Proverbs 23 and 7, so will you, so you will be. You must function uh, in your dominion and don't lose your place of dominion or you will be dominated. This is not the, the time. The kingdom of heaven is verbal. God did not form it by thoughts. God did not form it by a finger. God formed it by a word. Hallelujah. He put a word in it. And that's what he did. You must learn how to proclaim it. And wherever there is fear, there is no faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to God to the pulling down of those strong goals. And of all you can do, pray. Hallelujah. Pray. So prayer is the first thing. Proclaiming the word, making sure you walk in it by faith. And the last thing is guard your mind and guard your heart. Because what you coming out of your mind, renew that. Your God is able to do any and all things. Do not ever forget it. We walk by faith, not by sight. We will not walk in fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. And the role of the believer, let's get on our knees. It doesn't cost you anything to pray. It doesn't cost you anything to learn this word. It doesn't cost you anything to speak positively. Find out what is God doing and find out how you can speak it and bind loose and bind in this earth because we need God in this time. 
like we've never needed him before. We need him to hear from heaven. Forgive our sins and show enough, heal our land. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for the Bible study tonight. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come into your space. Please do me a, a huge uh, favor when you pass this on. Please hit the notification button. Uh, subscribe and hit the notification button. This is going to be the medium that I will be transferring. This will be one of the areas uh, of social media that I will be utilizing in order to get the word of God to you in this time. Because when it's all over and said and done, we're going to need a word to encourage our heart. I love you. Be safe. Uh, stay focused. Stay attentive to the things of the kingdom and watch God pull you through. Be blessed in Jesus name. Thank you for joining me as we are certainly now behind this veil to find out God what is going on. I love you and be blessed until our next appointed time. God bless you.